I remember when I was a kid, people telling me that wind power sucked majorly. It wasn't going to work. Turbines weren't efficient. They stopped working all the time. Well, now everything has changed. The Biden administration just announced that the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management will hold an offshore wind energy lease sale on the 6th of December 2022. This will open the floodgates for wind energy offshore in the US. Offshore is far more efficient than onshore. Now on the same day, a wind turbine with blades bigger than the Statue of Liberty broke a world record. Hello my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking, great to see you. My name's Sam Evans and I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. Thanks for tuning in. Great to see all the new subscribers recently come on board. Wonderful to have you all. And great to see everyone else back as well. Now I just wanna say a big thanks to you. Channel views have really started to grow. We're hitting over a million views per week. And it's really exciting to see. Thanks for your support. Really, really appreciate it. So what is going on right now? Well, wind power is going ballistic. There are wind turbines that are far bigger than NFL football pitches. Far bigger. In fact, twice the size. So wind power is going crazy. And it's actually quite a bit more efficient than solar power on a cost basis. But of course... Solar power works really well for households in particular, and it works really well in sunny areas. But obviously, there's not always sun. The sun doesn't always shine. Some places are more cloudy, and we have the nighttime. That's where wind power comes in. Now, a wind turbine has broken the record for the most power generated from the wind in a 24-hour period. And this is going to keep happening over and over and over and over. So I'm not going to tell you every time this happens. But when there's some pretty significant occasions like this, I'll let you know about it. Siemens Jamesa's 14 222 DD offshore wind turbine prototype, which is situated at a test center in Denmark, generated 359 megawatt hours worth of electricity in 24 hours. That's one turbine generating 360 megawatt hours of electricity in only 24 hours. That's crazy. In comparison, each New York res City resident uses 13,452 kilowatt hours over the course of each year. One megawatt equals 1,000 kilowatts, meaning this single turbine generated enough energy to provide for a person's electricity use for 27 years. 27 years in a single day. Wind turbines are, of course, giant windmills that convert kinetic energy of the wind into electric energy. Gusts of wind turn the propeller like blades around a rotor spinning a generator and creating electricity, which can then be routed into the national grid of a country. Now there's quite a few countries around the world, right? Where solar power can be used entirely during the day. There are quite a few grids now around the world where solar energy provides enough power for the entire grid in that city to run during the day. But of course, when the sun goes down, it actually gets windier in almost every place in the world during the night. And there's no sun to power those solar panels. But if you have a few wind turbines like this, well, that's your solution. According to the International Energy Agency, wind power generated 1,870 terawatt hours of electricity in 2021. That's almost as much as all the other non-hydro renewable energy sources combined. Wind power comprises 9.2% of all power used in the US. As of February 2022, according to the US Energy Information Administration, that figure today would be probably around 10%. Pacific record-breaking turbine has a rotor of 728 feet in diameter. 728 feet, but it's not the biggest in the world. It has 354 foot blades. The Statue of Liberty is only 151 feet tall, and it stands on a 154 foot pedestal, making the height of the entire sculpture 305 feet tall, meaning this windmill is much, much, much bigger than the Statue of Liberty. By increasing the rotor diameter to 222 meters with 108 meter long blades, the SG14222 D delivers more than 25% in annual energy production compared to its predecessor, said Siemens Jamisa. With every new generation of our offshore direct drive turbine technology, 
which uses fewer moving parts than geared turbines, component improvements have enabled greater performance and efficiency, maintaining reliability. We are able to reduce time to market of the SG14 222D thanks to standardized processes and a fully developed supply chain, enabling high volume production at low risk. The zero production is planned for 2024. According to Siemens Jamisa, each SG turbine will be able to provide enough energy to power around 18,000 households annually. So you don't need a whole lot of these. I mean, you only need five of these to power nearly 100,000 households. The record being broken is a step forward in the worldwide shift toward renewable energy and away from fossil fuels. Now, I made a video recently explaining how the Oxford University and a bunch of other researchers got together and worked out that if the world transitions to renewable energy before 2050, we save at least $10 trillion. But if it's even faster than that, we save even more money. I don't want to overstate the meaning of this achievement, but just generally, wind turbines keep getting larger. In fact, I made a video of the largest wind turbines in the world. They're crazy. I'll put a link in the description below to that video. Check that out if you want. Now, the industry has for decades thought that we were approaching some upper limit to wind turbine size, only to be proven wrong, as larger and larger machines have been engineered and built. Ryan Weiser, a senior scientist at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, told Newsweek. It's a rather amazing feat of human ingenuity and engineering and science and talent. Why it matters is simple. Larger turbines tend to produce cheaper electricity than smaller turbines. This particular turbine is designed for offshore use and the larger the turbine, the fewer turbines and foundations and operation and maintenance personnel needed for a given amount of electricity produced. 60 of these record-breaking SG offshore wind turbines are due to be installed in the Moray West offshore wind farm in Scotland. And who knows? Maybe a whole lot more of them will be installed off the coast of California as well. With the wind energy lease sale about to happen on the 6th of December 2022, the coast of California will change forever. The wind energy lease areas are in two regions on the outer continental shelf off of the California coastline that cover approximately 373,268 acres. The leases in the Moro Bay and the Humboldt wind energy areas will generate at least 4.5 gigawatts of clean power. That's enough to power 1.5 million homes. And if you think about it, right, if they use these turbines, they actually don't need all that many for 1.5 million homes. They would actually only need around 80 of these wind turbines to power all of those houses. The new Pacific offshore wind power will help meet both California's goal of net zero grid by 2045 and the US's goal of deploying 30 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2030. Just five days ago, US coastal states increased their long-term offshore wind targets by 58% in the third quarter of 2022. That sets a record for quarterly growth. Now, Electric says that one of the things spurring that growth is federal support for a floating wind turbine industry, with the Biden administration's floating offshore wind shot initiative and a goal to deploy 15 gigawatts of offshore wind power by 2035. Wind turbines are changing the world and allowing us to cheaply install renewable energy that's going to last for decades to come. I've got to say, I'm really excited to see these changes, not only to wind turbines, but also to American policy around offshore wind. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.